Welcome to tutorial 12. Today we're going to cover how to play sound inside of Isadora. We've already seen some sound playback when we're just playing a regular movie because of course most movie files will allow you to play audio as well. It's also possible to have a movie file that is with an MOV extension for instance that only has audio. That's one way to do it and if you do that you can just play it inside of a normal movie player. The other way is to use an uncompressed AIFF or WAV file. These are special and Isadora treats them specially because it gives you some uh, things you can do that you can't do with a normal movie file. So that's what I want to show how to do today. To start off, I'm going to import several AIFF and WAV files. And you can see that they go into the audio files section of the media window. That's what's telling you that it recognized them as uncompressed AIFF or WAV files. And to play those, instead of using the movie player, we go to group number two, which is the audio group, and look for a sound player. Now, this looks, in many respects, like a movie player. Several of the inputs are the same, but there's some significant differences. I'm going to start by telling it that I wanted to play sound number eight, and this is just like the movie player. I go to the sound input now, I type number eight, and I'm going to hit return to confirm that. But when I do, it doesn't actually start playing immediately. But that's different than the movie player, which does start playing as soon as you tell it which movie you want to play. Instead, there's two inputs that the movie player doesn't have, start and stop. And those are used when you trigger them to start and stop the sound from playing. Before I begin this, I'm going to take the volume level down just a little bit to 75% so that it doesn't overwhelm my voice. Now I'm going to click on the dash here in the start to trigger that input. And when I do, you'll hear the sound play. But you'll notice that unlike the movie player, when it gets to the end, it's going to stop playing. Because the default setting is that the loop enable, which is also on the movie player, is turned off. So if I want that sound to loop, I have to explicitly ask to do so by turning the loop enable on. So now that I've done that, if I hit the start input, it'll start playing. And now it'll continue on to the end, and just like the movie player normally does, loop back to the beginning. You can choose either option depending on which is useful for you. And I'll stop that by clicking the stop button, because when the loop enable is on, that's the only way to stop the sound. So, basically, now I have something where I can turn that sound on and off on command. And to do, to do that, or to give an example of that, I'm just going to bring in two keyboard watchers. First one I'm going to set to look for small letter A, and I will duplicate that. And then I set the second one to look for small letter S, and I'm going to hook those two to the start and stop inputs of the sound player. So now, if I want to start the sound, I hit small letter A on the computer keyboard, and it starts. And then when I hit small letter S, it stops. So in fact, I've almost made like a little uh, music keyboard here where uh, pressing keys on the keyboard uh, caused the sound to start and stop much like an audio sampler and in fact that was the thinking behind the sound player is that when you want sounds to start instantaneously and to be able to play them uh, in this kind of way that's what the sound player allows you to do. To take that metaphor even a little bit further I'm actually going to use a MIDI keyboard that I already have connected to control that. So I'm going to bring in a note on watcher which looks for me to press a key on the MIDI keyboard and a note off watcher which looks for me to release it. And if I hook those two actors up just like I did the keyboard watchers, then I press a key on the MIDI keyboard over here, it starts, and when I release that key, it stops. So now it's really like an audio sampler, right? So that behavior is just a little bit different than the movie player but gives you some advantages. The rest of the inputs are mostly very similar, and I want to show how those work, also taking advantage of the fact I have this MIDI keyboard here, because it has some knobs on it that allow me to do continuous controls. So I'm going to get a control watcher, and in fact I'm going to get three of them, because I'm going to control three things inside of this actor. I've got three knobs here. I can see when I move this, since the control watchers are looking for everything, that's knob number 101, this is knob number 100, and this is knob 105. So 100, 101, and 105. I set my control watchers to look for those specific controllers now so that I have independent recognition of those three knobs. So I'm going to take the first one 
connect the value of the control watcher into the volume. The second one, I'm going to take the value output into the pan, which controls the left and right panning of the sound. And the last one, I'm going to connect to the play start. And finally, like the movie player, we have the play start and play length, where I can shorten the amount of the, uh, the bit of the sound that I'm playing. I'm going to set that to 5% now. We're just going to play a small bit of the sound. So without changing any of the knobs, if I just press the key again, we hear that, and you hear the loop going on. And I release it, and it stops. You'll notice there's a little click in there as it loops. This can be adjusted by adjusting the crossfade input. If you do that, and these are in samples by the way, but I think you probably just turn it until it sounds good to you, it'll do a small crossfade loop at the edit point so that it's a little bit smoother. That's one of the special features of the sound player. See, now it's a little bit smoother there. So now if I hold that key down, not only can I hear this small loop, but turning the first knob, I can control the panning. The second knob controls the volume. You can see in the graphics, see the dot represents the volume of the sound, and its left and right position represents the panning. And using the third knob, I can actually determine which part of the sound I want to play by changing the play start. Okay, so there's a lot of possibilities. The crossfade loop is maybe one of the most special reasons to use the sound player because it's something you absolutely cannot do in the movie player. And hopefully it's clear, but like the movie player, if I want to play more than one sound, I just bring in another sound player, choose a different sound. Again, I'll turn the volume down a little bit. Turn the loop enable on. And now if I start that sound, it's playing. Lower the volume a little bit more. And I can still do my other sound and control it as I was before. Now, of course, to stop the second sound player, I have to manually trigger it here. One of the things that you often want to do in this situation is that you want to make it so that when you come into the scene, it automatically starts the sound. And one important actor to do that is in group number seven, the enter scene trigger. We don't have any keyboards or uh, controllers hooked up to this sound player, the one that plays the other sound. But if I hook the enter scene trigger up to it, if I leave the scene and come back, it automatically starts because the enter scene trigger, as soon as you come into the scene, goes and sends a trigger to cause things to happen when you enter the scene. So that's a very useful one to know about. The final thing I have to mention about this is that uh, certain kinds of files that you might expect to show up in the audio file section don't. And the perfect example of that is an MP3 file. If I go over here and I find this uh, file called bells.mp3 and I say open, it doesn't go into the audio file section, it actually goes into the video files. And that's because the audio file section can only handle uncompressed sounds. The MP3 is a compressed format. So, in, you would like to play a sound like that, which you can, all you need to do is get a movie player, bring that in, and choose that video file. Uh, as it says here, video file, it doesn't actually have any video, it's only audio, and you can tell that because of this icon, this speaker icon. But if I choose number one and play that, you'll hear that sound. Now you can't do a few of the things that I showed you with the sound player, but it still will play the sound as you would expect. So that's an introduction into using sound with Isadora.